Our next guest, and that is none other than Daniel Boguslaw, an investigative reporter based in Washington, D.C. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. So you, like Prem, are very prolific, and there's so many articles I could ask you about, but I want to ask you about your more, most recent one. New York Times puts daily episode on ICE amid internal firestorm over Hamas sexual violence article. As the Times faces scrutiny for its coverage of Israel's war on Gaza, it has capitulated to the pro-Israel media watchdog camera. So tell us about this story and how did it even uh, evolve? How did you think of covering it? And this article you're talking about, by the way, is called uh, Screams Without Words, How Hamas Weaponized Sexual Violence on October 7th. A Times investigation uncovered new details showing a pattern of rape, mutilation, and extreme brutality against women in the attacks on Israel. You know, when the story that we were sort of investigating with our story first appeared, um, you know, I, I've read it twice over just because it stood out to me as not only breaking with the sort of journalistic conventions that, that you know, I practice in my work, but also seemingly the journalistic conventions of the New York Times itself. I mean, just the, the juxtaposition of, you know, uh, talking about 150 sources interviewed with only, you know, less than a half dozen named sources in the piece, um, a lot of hedging language around central claims, um, and an overall sense of, you know, when I read any article, I try to think about how did they put this together? You know, how could I, what, what can I learn from this article? You know, where, where are the, the, the inconsistencies or the, you know, the holes that maybe they weren't able to fill in something? So, you know, from the very start reading it, um, I think I had this initial curiosity about how it came to be and um, how it how it was put together and, and actually sourced. This article sort of strove to be the sort of definitive piece on a sort of coordinated campaign of, of sexual violence um, on October 7th. But like I said, the piece came out and, and I was sort of, you know, read it twice and moved on to, to uh, you know, other work that other projects that I was working on. Um, and slowly it just kind of, the, the criticism and, and the questions uh, started to pour out by just, you know, casual observers and, and readers who sort of seemed to have had a similar uh, gut reaction to the piece um, as I did. And, you know, uh, the named sources were, were all hyper scrutinized. And, um, you know, the family of the, of the chief's source that the, the story is really framed around came out and basically refuted the Times characterization of her quotes. Um, and and really pushed back and said, you know, this uh, this is th this really took what we were saying out of context. We really don't feel like there was any uh, conclusive evidence here that um, our family member was was uh, a victim of sexual violence. We don't want to speak for other instances, but you know, our family being used as the sort of centerpiece for this is is a mischaracterization. Um, two of the other named sources. Uh, were, were scrutinized for differing accounts um, in the evolution of, of their story. Um, uh, perhaps more concerningly was that one of them was a former um, Israeli uh, uh, intelligence, um, uh, uh, so was a former IDF soldier serving in the uh, intelligence uh, division. We should say that, that the sources, they're not sources who claim that they were sexually assaulted. These are sources who claim to have... Uh, Witness their it's interesting the way the story evolved. I mean, oftentimes, uh, you know, you you work a coverage area and, and people come forward to you with tips. But uh, for me, I really felt like I wanted to understand what happened. And, and so did my colleague, Ryan Grimm, I think. And so we really just, you know, hit the phones and, you know, tried to reach out to people who, you know, also we assumed would, would have felt similarly given the uh, you know, just, just the feeling that you get reading this piece. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of great reporters and a lot of great uh, editors at the, at the New York Times who, who do their best to get the facts right. And, um, you know, fortunately, uh, we were able to reach people inside the, inside the newsroom who, you know, said that there was a lot of internal uproar over this piece. Uh, so much so, in fact, that a episode of The Daily that, that was set to premiere after the piece came out was, you know, put on ice as they tried to sort of get more string on, on, to substantiate some of the claims made in the, in the initial article. 